okay, so hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor to be here to speak about how our great and mighty God uh, is glorified even in the minute details of this world. Uh, before we progress on to the main thesis, which has science as its focus, I will actually take the first few minutes to devote ourselves to theology, to set up the biblical parameters for this discourse. So why is this necessary? Well, as John Calvin described, the human heart is an idol factory, and God's creation is not outside of our reach. And as faithful stewards who wish to best honor God, it is worthwhile to take the first few moments to establish the parameters at the outset, first and foremost as a method of honoring God, and secondly, to guard ourselves against idolatry. I'll quickly mention two abuses. Uh, Dr. Chow mentioned them as well. Uh, first is the Tower of the Babel incident, where after developing the brick and mortar technology, man immediately built a tower whose top will reach into the heaven to ultimately make a name for themselves. They used technology for their own glory, and God was not pleased, to say the least. Also, the psalmist said, We'll just leave it there. Also, the psalmist says, Some trust in chariots and horses, but we will boast in the name of the Lord. When any aspect of creation takes precedence over trusting in God, this is spoken of in a negative light. And of course, despite the possibility of idolatry, though, God has mandated man to subdue the earth. Thus, it is also possible to honor God through science and technology. An example is Noah's Ark, where God instructs Noah to uh, make an ark to escape the judgment that was to come. And in, ad in addition, the builders of the tabernacle in the book of Exodus were the ones in whom the Lord has put skill and understanding. The source was ultimately God, and they were, uh, they were putting this God-given talent to use. So on one side, science and technology can lead to idolatry, and on the other hand, is an act of obedience and using the wisdom that God granted. So the question must be asked, how can we walk this fine line? How can we use science and technology in a manner worthy of God, in a manner of honoring Him, but without going too far as to abuse it? To answer, we look at the purpose of creation. Why did God create? And Colossians 1.16 tells us that all things have been created through Him and for Him. Everything was made for Christ. But how is this related to the creation mandate? How can we use creation for Him? The wrong answer would be to just place a Fur Jesus sticker onto technology and just hope that God is pleased. That's the wrong answer. But for the positive, correct answer, let's not look to ourselves, but first to the London Baptist Confession, one of the great Puritan confessions, uh, and an excellent standard for orthodoxy. It'll come up. The confession says regarding creation, in the beginning it pleased God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for the manifestation of the glory of his eternal power, wisdom, and goodness to create or make the world. The Puritans have summarized God's purpose as that which is underlined, for the manifestation of the glory of his eternal power, wisdom, and goodness. The goal was to reveal his glorious attributes by putting them on display. He was putting his attributes on display, but it must be asked, to whom? To whom was he putting this on display for? Herman Bobbink, a Dutch Reformed theologian, asserts that if there truly exists a revelation of God, and as Christians, we do affirm that God did reveal, then it also has the purpose, and what is that purpose? That human beings will learn to know God from it, and will love Him and serve Him. God created so that His attributes can be revealed to man. And of course, the Confession of Herman Bobbink are not our ultimate authorities. They're just merely guides for orthodoxy. Thus, we listen to Apostle Paul, in Romans 1.20, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, that's the revelation part, and being understood, there's man's knowledge part through what has been made. And that's it! Okay? That's one undeniable purpose God had in mind uh, when he created. God created so that his glory can be revealed. Everything exists to that end. So when we do science, the purpose should be to glorify God. And this seminar was actually designed to demonstrate to you how science can actually do that, how science can glorify God. But then here, we must slow down, because it is here where we can be led astray. That idol-making factory known as the human heart can enter here. Why? Because we can get so excited and apply, focus on applying this everywhere that we end up offering strange fire or constructing the golden calf. The best way to honor God is to obey God, for, so for specific guidance, 